On first down, the handoff to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50 yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, INDY. And again, it's picked up. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with a second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Kenny Moore gets to Deshaun Watson. That's a sack for Kenny Moore. Kenny has a pick and now a sack in the game. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What is up, Colts Nation? Welcome back to the Bring the Juice podcast. I'm your co-host, Derek Larger. Joining me, as always, is your other co-host, Cody Felger. Uh, We've been seeing your guys' comments. Really liked uh, the first video of this series of the 2017 draft class video. Make sure you guys continue to check those out. Uh, And we liked your comments. And so we're going to keep going here. Uh, We're going to talk about the 2019 Colts draft class. Starting to get into some territory here where you could start to have a few more arguments about what you want to do with these. But Cody and I were talking before the podcast, and I think we all gave a general consensus here of who the four worst draft picks were in order. So, Cody, do you want to go ahead and give the order? Because you and I obviously have the same answer here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think the first one is pretty obvious. He's the only guy not currently on the active roster from this class, that being Jackson Barton, a tackle out of Utah, picked in the seventh round. Yeah, he's just a guy that never really was going to sift the final roster. Um, I know he was kind of on the practice squad for a little bit, kind of just floated around the league and uh, just never was really going to do anything with the Colts, especially because of the emergence of Braden Smith at right tackle and Anthony Costanzo, obviously. Um, so, yeah, he's a guy that's undoubtedly – the, fur, the worst pick here, just because he's not going to contribute to this team. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we went, we actually went then, uh, Gary Green, uh, defensive end, Mississippi State. He's a guy, I think he's still on the Colts practice squad, but, you know, just with the log jam that we've talked about at that defensive line in that defensive end position, um, there's really probably no hope to make this final roster. Um, but he's a guy that, you know, had been kind of a practice squad type guy. That's probably what he'll be with the Colts. Um, but you know, he's still on the roster, but he's on the practice squad. And then the other, the, the third one here was, uh, Javon Patterson center out of Ole Miss. We never got to see Patterson his rookie year because he tore his ACL before the season started, but he's a guy that the reason why I have him ahead of Jackson Barton and, and Gary green here is because I feel like Javon Patterson actually has a legitimate chance to compete for a roster spot from this 53 man roster. I mean, yeah. the Colts obviously drafted Danny Pinter, and then they they I know uh, Frank Reich and uh, was talking up Jake Eldren Camp. Um, I know that's a name that some people have kind of hyped up a little bit, kind of a, a backup guard type of guy. But I think that Patterson is a guy that we shouldn't forget about as well. Um, could potentially be, you know, he played center at Old Miss, so potentially be the backup center there. So he's a guy that I think potentially just because of, you know, besides Danny Pinter, the Colts really didn't address the interior, and I feel like he has a chance now to potentially be a backup um, at one of the center or guard positions. Um, so that's number three. And then the, the last one is EJ Speed, uh, linebacker Tarleton State. Um, we just have not seen a lot of EJ Speed. He was a fifth-round pick last year. He really stood out in the preseason, uh, had some really nice games there. But obviously when you have one of the best trios of linebackers in Darius Leonard, Anthony Walker, and Bobby Okariki, a uh, guy like EJ Speed is probably not going to see the field a lot, and he really didn't. Uh, but he has a lot of intangibles that you like. He's got great length. He's got great speed. He lives up to that name. Um, and he's the guy that, you know, we feel like he's similar in a way to Darius Leonard coming out of kind of a smaller school. And, uh, you know, he has a lot of the makings to be a pretty good linebacker. Um, like you said, he's got the length. He's got the intangibles. Now he just has to see, can it translate to the NFL level? And we, we, it seems like we see a Chris Ballard pick like this about every year, just a physical freak type of guy. But those are our top four for the worst of this draft class. And, I mean, these guys are all, you know, fifth to seventh round picks, which I think is good to hear, you know, from year one. Uh, but, Derek, moving on to number five, who do you have here as the fifth worst pick in this 2019 NFL draft? 
starting to get into the middle of the pack here. I'm going to go with yeah. Marvell Tell, the cornerback from USC. Um, I think we, Cody and I have said it multiple times that we like what we see from Marvell Tell as a prospect. Uh, has a lot of great intangibles. Uh, can be a guy that, you know, if he shores up his mechanics in the short uh, passing game, that Marvell Tell can be a guy that we think could potentially compete for a roster spot at some point, or at least be a a good secondary piece uh, for that corner spot. Because, you know, Marvell Tell's got good ball instincts, and he uh, played very well in the small amount of snaps that he had last year uh, as a rookie. So it was good to see there. But um, right now, I, I just haven't seen enough of Marvell Tell yet to put him over anyone else right now. Uh you know, and that's just kind of how it is right now. But, you know, in, in year two, who knows? Maybe Marvell Tell got better and, you know, we could see a lot more time from him. But, Cody, who's your fifth? Yeah, I was tempted to just turn the pot and go, you know, one of those second round picks or something like that. It seems like I do that about every podcast we've done here. But, no, I'm going to stick with Marvell Tell as well in this one. Yeah, I think he's a guy You're that has out. potential. You know you want well, man, you chickened uh, out. You whew. wanted you wanted to say it, but you didn't in the end. I, I see to. it is. I wanted to. He'll be my next one then. <laughs> All right. Um, um, but no, no, for real though. Marvell tells a guy converted safety from USC, uh, converted to corner this last year. I thought you know he just didn't see a lot of the field, and that I think is why I put him over some of those other guys that I'll mention. Is just because I feel like he didn't have didn't have enough playing time, and I mean. He kind of shouldn't shouldn't have last year. You know, he's he's a guy that played pretty well, but he also had a lot of rookie moments. And so um, I think overall the, the positives outweighed the negatives and you have to feel, you know, pretty good if you're a Colts fan and if you're, you know, you're you're the defensive backs coach because you, he's has similar to EJ Speed, he has a lot of those physical tools that you really like. And I thought all in all, he played pretty well with that transition to the corner position, arguably the hardest position on the defense. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to stay with Marvell Tell there as well. Yeah, for my next option here, um, I'm going to go Paris Campbell, um, Ohio State. And, Derek, before you freak out, this is why I'm going to go Paris Campbell is because he just was not on the field at time, at least. I'm not saying he wasn't good when he was on the field. I get that, and that's probably going to be the basis of your argument. But, basically, he only played the seven games, and he was effective when he played, but, you know, he just didn't play. And after year one – you know, and he obviously has plenty of time to redeem himself and totally be one of the best picks in this class. And I believe he he has that ability. And I believe the Colts believe he has that ability. And so, uh, but, you know, as it stands right now, I think he's the guy that, you know, just didn't see the field a ton. And the best of, the best ability is availability. Um, so that's why I'm going to go here with Paris Campbell. But, you know, I very easily could be the next guy who you're probably going to choose. I can see it either way. So uh, definitely want to hear your reaction because I can, I can tell you're not happy. I'm not happy with you. Gosh, it's like you're trying to drag me down. Like I gave your boy props and you're not giving my boys any. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. Um. Well, all right. So I, I'm, I'm going to go to our, our boy and our dear friend here. Uh, I'm going with Ben Banigou. Um, as the fifth option here, the fifth best draft pick by the Colts in the 2019 draft. Uh, ben Banigou was a really good player, um, had a few games this last year where he certainly made an impact. Uh, we talked a lot about that strip sack that he had against the Denver Broncos in Indy that won them the game and you know, basically sent Joe Flacco to a new team. So, <laughs> Ben, we appreciate that one. Um, but uh, I- I'm going with Ben Banigou here at-, at number five because, again, I- I'm looking at potential here, and that's why I think that I can't put Paris before Ben because we're now looking at an issue where Ben Banigou is now in the worst situation possible for uh, other than Paris Campbell because of the fact that there's so little flexibility in the, in the defensive line group now. And there's a lot more flexibility in the wide receiver group because there's just not much there at the moment. So Paris Campbell has the, a better option there. And then for the fourth best, I'll go with Paris Campbell because obviously, like you said, didn't get to play much last year. 
But I feel like this guy's potential is still all the way through the roof. Uh, Frank Reich, Reich said that he is still like really, really excited to get Paris Campbell back out on the field. And if he stays healthy, Frank Reich said, I got a lot in plan for Paris Campbell. So I, I can't wait for that. Um, Paris just has unlimited potential to do a lot of things with that. Uh, so Cody, who's your, who's your fourth best? Yeah. I mean, then I'll go Ben Banigou. Um, yeah, I believe, you know, he, he was, he showed flashes. Like we know that Denver Broncos game, um, even that first game of the season was sacked on Phillip rivers. He was actually joking with us a little bit when we had him on, uh, a few weeks ago, just about, you know, how he kind of says when, when they get back to the facility, when they like actually meet in person, he's going to probably give Philip Rivers a little bit of flack for it. Um, yeah. But, you know, overall, it, yeah, I think Ben Banigou, he showed a lot of flashes, but, you know, there is a, a lot of competition there at that defensive end position. I do think that Jabal Sheard not being brought back does serve Ben Banigou very well uh, because it opens the opportunity for more snaps and for more opportunities for him to you know potentially flash some more um you know and and i think another reason you know we kind of argued you know potential versus i i you know the reason why i put banagu um as a little bit better of a draft pick as it stands after year one is just because of the durability and the health um but you know yeah that wide receiver position i feel like you know you addressed it in the draft michael Pittman, uh, zach pascal really emerged last year and so Paris Campbell has certainly has an opportunity. And I think he's going to, you know, if he can stay healthy, he's going to be in the Colts plans for sure. I just think there's also some competition now that the Colts have addressed. And they also have a guy, you know, T.Y. Hilton coming back. Um, so I think it's kind of, uh, you know, he's still young. He's still, you know, he was just a rookie last year. But I think this is the big year for Paris Campbell to kind of solidify himself as, you know, one of the top three passing options for Philip Rivers in this offense. And so that's kind of why my argument is why I put them ahead of him. But, you know, you could really go either way with this, but certainly think that Ben Banigou showed the flashes, but um, we'll certainly have to put it all together here um, and, and continue to improve his game going in here to, to his second year. Um, and I guess then that'll move me now to the next guy I have here. I'm going to probably go Rocky Sin. Um, I thought Rocky Sin, you know, at the beginning of the year, he kind of had some ups and downs. Obviously, that Denver Broncos game, while it was a good game and a, and a good memory for uh, Ben Banigou, it was not probably a good memory for Rocky Sin. He's probably honestly forgotten about that game, just kind of blocked it out of his memory because that was not a good game, if you remember. He was facing off against one of the best receivers in the game in Cortland Sutton. And obviously Sutton, you know, kind of torched him in certain moments. There's a lot of flags. It was like five flags against Rocky Sin. That game was really a learning curve and a learning pains type of game for Rocky Sin. But I felt like in the last part of the year, I'm mean, a stats will back this up. He really was a, a pretty good corner. I think he's a top 15 corner mm-hmm. you know, as the year went on. And he was only a rookie, you know, coming out uh, of a, you know, coming out of Temple, you know, just being kind of thrown into the fire day one, I thought all in all, he played pretty well. I do expect him to elevate his game to another level here now in year two. Um, But I feel like just looking at year one, these other two guys that that we're going to look at here, I just feel like they had phenomenal rookie seasons. I felt like they didn't really have any super rocky games. I mean, they were pretty good all the way through. So that's why I have Rocky ascend here. Still think he's a good player and he's going to continue to ascend and be that top corner on the depth chart for a lot of years for the Colts. But I got Rocky ascend here um, as the third best pick in this draft. Who do you have, Derek? Yeah, I'm going to agree with you there. Um, And only because Rocky ascend again, that first seven, eight games of the year had a little bit of a Rocky start. I mean, and that's, that's to be expected when your rookie corner um, that that's going to happen for a lot of people, uh, especially for a guy like Rocky Sin, who's not a, a tremendous athlete by stretches of some of the better corners in the NFL. But, you know, again, Rocky Sin, like you said, uh, we, we mentioned, I think Zach Hicks also mentioned this too, cause you brought that up that, uh, I think Zach Hicks mentioned that too, that he was showing the stats that by the stat numbers, Rocky Sin was a top 15 cornerback the second half of the season. I mean, and that's a good thing to hear. You know, he's a top, he's a top, uh, level kind of corner last year, uh, at the last half of the year. So that's good, uh, thing to see just so that, you know, the more experience he got, he, 
just started to learn where he needed to be and to make plays. I mean, he had a couple of interceptions towards the end of the year, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, Rocky Sin started getting better. He started staying healthier. You know, he was able to, able to stay on the field longer. So Rocky Sin definitely was a good one there for me. All right, so this one, <laughs> number two and number one, I feel like it's back in 2018 again. We're talking about Darius Leonard and Quentin Nelson. Now, obviously, these guys aren't Quentin Nelson and Darius Leonard, but, you know, again, it's kind of the thing. You have the argument for uh, who you want to put at number one and who you want to put at number two. Um, I, I, I am going to go with Kahari Willis at number two. Um, that's just what I, I believe right now. Uh, when I'm just looking at, I'm going to look at it for the same way that I said with the Ben Banigou and Paris Campbell issue that I feel that the potential for Bobby Okariki to take over in that system is much better for him than it is for Kahari. And just the way that the, the safety room is right now. Um, no, I mean, that's no shot at Kahari. I mean, we've, I mean, Zach Kiefer even mentioned, uh, the, hidden secret story that Kahari Willis kept from everybody last year, where he was basically going to a hospital every night uh, for his twin babies who were potentially uh, about to die. Thankfully, none of that happened, but you know, Kahari was still able to come to practice into games every week and still perform. I mean, under that pressure, (laughs) I mean, that dude is, that dude's a stud. I mean, and, more ways than one uh can't really say much about kahari willis other than that there so yeah kahari willis for me at number two and bobby okariki for me at number one uh bobby okariki was i think actually the top graded rookie linebacker last year uh so it's pff wise at least um bobby okariki is a as a phenomenal guy that plays a lot like Darius Leonard. He's long, he's fast, he's very instinctual, just happened to be in the right place at the right time a lot of times. Uh, started making turnovers towards the end of the year. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, when people are talking about whether or not Anthony Walker is going to get more uh, snaps or not, I mean, Bobby Okariki is going to be the one to take those snaps from him, I think, in the end. So, Kari Willis at number two and Bobby Okariki at number one for me. Cody, do you agree or disagree? I actually disagree. Um, and the <laughs> reason why I disagree, it's kind of kind of going back again. You know, you made the argument of the Paris Campbell, uh, Ben Banigou. I'm kind of going with <laughs> kind of the same way with that Quentin Nelson, Darius Leonard debate, um, where I feel like a little bit, you know, with Bobby Okariki, third rounder, as opposed to Kari Willis, like, I kind of expected Bobby Okariki, you know, if anybody would have had an impact between those two, I would have said probably Bobby Okariki. Um, Kari Willis, nobody really expected, you know, and I feel like if they did, they're kind of lying. (laughs) Nobody really expected Kari Willis to come in, let alone have the impact that he had. They'd be one of the best strong safeties in the game. And for me, that's the reason why I put him at number one, because I did not have that expectations. And in terms of value, where you got Kari Willis, I mean, Compared to Bobby Okariki, I mean, it's 20 picks is the difference here. You know, Kari Willis was drafted 109, Bobby Okariki 89. So for me, I felt like they are both phenomenal in their own right. Like, I don't want to discredit Bobby Okariki because he was phenomenal. I mean, the stats don't lie. You know, pro football focus, best rookie linebacker. Like, I get that. And I'm really happy to have both these guys on my squad. But I'm just doing it from a value standpoint for where you drafted Kari Willis compared to where you drafted Bobby Okariki, Kari Willis, you know, the, the, the expectations that we had on him just were not the same as Bobby Okariki and, and just to see what he did. And I believe he played, started in more games than Bobby Okariki. I could be wrong there, um, but he was just phenomenal. Like they both were phenomenal, but Kari Willis just really stood out to me. I think he was easily one of the best Colts defenders last year. I'm super excited to see how he puts it together here in year two now, um, now, now knowing that he has that starting strong safety position throughout the year. And so that's kind of my argument for why I have him. But, you know, I don't want to discredit either of these players. They're both absolute studs. Yep. Um, super awesome to see Chris Ballard hitting on, you know, kind of mid-round picks again, 
seems like that's really where his bread and butter is, is finding those mid-round guys that really make an impact on day one. And it's certainly exciting to see these two guys um, going to be on that Indianapolis defense for years to come, hopefully. So that's kind of my take on it, Derek. Yeah, so, yeah, like you said, two great guys there at the number one and number two spot. Let us know in the comments what you think. Uh, I'm interested to see whether you guys think it's Bobby Okariki or Kahari Willis. I mean, both of these guys were top rated at their position as rookies um, that last year. So, I mean, they both had incredible seasons. I mean, it's hard Mm -hmm. to choose between the two of them there. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for the 2019 draft class grades from best from worst to best. Next, we're going to be doing the 2020 draft class. So thank you guys again so much. We hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, go Colts.